What's up guys, Level by Level Gamer, and this is going to be a continuation on my video series on the Fire Stick TV and emulating on that device. Now if you remember, my last video was an unboxing, um, I unboxed the device itself and this wireless Bluetooth controller which I have hooked up to the Fire Stick TV now. I also have the Fire Stick TV hooked up to this old Junkyard Fine TV here. Um, let me pair the device. There you go. So you can see that I have all that set up and we are ready to go. Now, if you are into that kind of thing, please hit the like button below. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Um, I'd be greatly appreciated. Now, the emulator that I choose to go with um, is RetroArch. And now, RetroArch is more of like a... Um, hub where it does multiple emulators. It connects you into lots of different ones. There are cores for all of your old school stuff. Um, I went through another one that's very similar called Matsu. It didn't have as many options. I downloaded individual emulators for the Super Nintendo, Nintendo, Atari. Tried those. It was really tedious and some of them didn't really work that well. So like I said, in the end I went with RetroArch. Now this isn't going to be a tutorial on RetroArch, this is going to be more of a let's see how this device emulates. If you want some tutorials, please let me know in the comments and we will hook you up. So right now we're going to take a quick pause. My camera woman, Mrs. Level by Level Gamer. Hello. <laughs> she's going to reposition kind of behind me where she can see the whole TV here and I'm going to show you some RetroArch action. All right, so something I also wanted to point out is <laughs> right off the bat, we lost the original remote for this thing. Um, don't know where it's at. The dog ate it. The the young and ran off with it. Don't gremlins. Know. Gremlins. It's who knows. It's gone. And um, you cannot pair the Fire Stick device with a universal like RCA universal remote. You can with like a Roku. Um, but Amazon, you cannot. It does not have an IR. It's like Bluetooth and over the net. So I got this old Samsung Galaxy Note 3 that I use as like a utility device. You can see the screen's busted. I upgraded a long time ago. Um, but I use this for lots of different stuff. And one of the things that came in so handy here was the Fire TV remote. Um, it's paired to the Fire Stick. And as you can see, if you look at the device um, it operates as a remote now something that's also really neat about this thing is you can actually use a keyboard in here and you can actually push and type on the screen and it does it on the fire stick and it's a lot less tedious than hitting the arrow keys and the OK button to type in a bunch of stuff so that is one of the things that helped me accomplish this is getting a remote on here because we lost the original. And another two tools that I went back and forth was apps to fire works just fine, but actually easy fire tools. Uh, this program here, it's on the Google Play Store, worked really well and it helped me push uh, or side load lots of different stuff um different emulators retroarch matsu um and all my entertainment stuff such as cody mob dro uh terrarium and actually terrarium went down asked back up that's a long story but this isn't about that this is about emulation but anyways so those are some things that i use was easy fire tv or easy fire tools fire tv apps to fire so i use this android phone to side load stuff and that can also be a tutorial if uh, you guys are interested in that kind of thing so felt like i needed to point that out now once i got retroarch onto the device um let's go right into that i started loading some cores so you go in here and you would go to download cores. 
you pick this out and you start going through here and finding what you want to try now <laughs> all these systems most of them let's just say most of them I'm very familiar with I've done a lot of emulation and I'm super excited about seeing if this thing can do it but some of the things I chose was the Atari 7800 um, let's see the as you can see there's a lot of it the Nintendo Game Boy I went through all these uh, there are a lot of those the NES which is the original Nintendo, the SNES, the Super Nintendo, or Famicom, known in Japan and other parts of the world. Went through all those. The Sega Master System, the Mega Drive, Game Gear, Genesis. So I put a bunch of those on there. Uh, I actually put the Sony PlayStation Original, the PSX. I put some of those on there. And so once you get those cores downloaded, uh, you'll see these are the ones I downloaded, which is quite a bit. I went through each one. And this is after I have done some individuals and went back and forth and looked for some of these cores, looked for the sources, put them originally or directly on there uh, because I wanted to see if it would save space. And RetroArch really isn't storage heavy. In fact, let me go ahead and show you that. So we can exit out of RetroArch real quick. And I want to show you, let's go into settings. After I had all of this entertainment stuff, because we use this. This is our TV we watch quite a bit. And um, RetroArch is loaded on with some games after putting on... A lot of stuff, of course, a file explorer, explorer, a downloader, a bunch of different entertainment apps here. Um, Cody is a must, Mob Bro, um, Terrarium, all these other things that are on here for entertainment, which is what this device is originally for. So, my idea was if I had this all set up to where we can watch our TV, watch our movies, be entertained, use the device what it's made for, and see if there's enough storage. See if it's still capable above and beyond to play some old school video games. I've got a lot better options for that. I've got my PC, you know, various other um, jailbroken and hacked devices. This is just to see if this could do it after it has all the stuff downloaded on there for what it's intended for. So let's go into all of these apps here. You can see that there's uh, quite a bit of stuff on here as far as entertainment goes. Um, so that's what would be taken by all the space. Now these things with the little cloud symbol, of course, those aren't on the device. So that's not taking up any space. But if we go to settings and then go to device and then about and go down here to storage, you can see that with all that I've done with this so far, now I'm not putting a whole library of stuff on here, but it still has enough space out of the internal storage. I could put quite a few other ROMs. Now, the good thing about retro and old ROMs is until you get up into the PlayStation 1, the PSP, um, some of those systems, they're real space hogs, but the old stuff doesn't take up hardly any space at all. So you could load this thing down with Nintendo if that's what you wanted to do. Load it down with Super Nintendo and focus on all those. If you wanted to have whole game libraries, there's still enough space. There's even ways... I've seen other YouTubers that have attached external storage to this and increased that and put even more on there. That's not my intent. My intent was just to see what this thing could do. So let's, let's get right into that. Um, back all the way out to RetroArch here. So you can see that there's actual space after putting all that stuff on there. You can see some of the cores that I've put on here. Now, once you put the cores on and you start um, playing the games, you'll see that on the end here, it'll list out. I put at least two games for each one of these systems. I've got the Atari here, the Game Boy Advance, 
the Game Boy Color, um, Game Boy, Nintendo 64, I knew it was going to be a flop, I did it anyways, I tried a couple of Nintendo 64 games, those things, if you're into this thing, you already know how that went, it was just a terrible failure, um, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, uh, Game Gear, um, Sega Master System, Sega Genesis or Mega Drive, and finally the PlayStation Original with PSX. So let's just start with Atari here. Now, with Atari, um, I'm going to go with Centipede. You can reset the core allocation because I've been using different cores with these. But when you first start it, it's going to ask you for a core. The only core I have for the Atari is the Pro system here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then I'm going to run the game. Um, it takes up the whole screen. You can mess around with those settings too. Like I said, this isn't a tutorial, so I'm not going to get into that. But you can actually change the resolutions, change uh, how much of the screen it takes up. I don't mind on this one being on the full screen. So here we go with the Atari 7800 Centipede. I mean, if you want to talk about the bubble wrap of video gaming and you can just sit and pop this stuff for hours and hours and it doesn't even really mean that much. You just go from like shooting one creature to the next. So anyways, that's that. If you want to exit, I've got my keyboard map to or my controller map to many different things. I've got my map to where I just do this thumb click and I press in and I can get to the menu here. So let's go ahead and close this content and let's try Galaga. I'm going to leave it on the same, well actually it'll probably ask me for a core, but it didn't. So it's on the same core, it's the only core I've got and it works just great. Another game that I really love for the Atari 7800. Um, if you've been watching my PAP videos, this is one game that I have set and played for a long, long time on the PAP for, you know, literally just a time killer. So you can see that it works great. Um, no issues. On all of these, whenever you uh, do an emulator, they always have save states, save slots, load states. You already know what all that means, but RetroArch provides all of that. Um, let's go to the Game Boy Advance. Now, Golden Sun, if you're or if you've been using the PAP or a lot of other devices, even PC, sometimes Golden Sun is one of those games that's really hard to emulate. It's got a lot of sound glitches and problems. Um, let's see how it does on the Fire Stick with RetroArch and the particular core that I'm using. So... Another thing that you'll notice is I have the frames per second down in the bottom of the screen. Um, that's showing a 60. That's as good as it gets, guys. So we haven't had a frame rate loss yet. Now, if you listen to the music, I'm not hearing any music glitches. So let's go ahead and get into the game. Now, something I noticed about this game is the sound glitches right off the bat and during this storm, there's a lot of slowdown and a lot of sound glitches with a lot of different emulators. This core on this one works great. I don't hear any anything. So, um, if, like I said, if you don't like this big of a screen you can fix that and we will get into that later on so let's try let's go ahead and close that Oop, hit the wrong button hit the back button let's close that content let's try the Pokemon Emerald here now the reason I'm going with this guys 
is because once again going back to my PAPK videos if you remember there were some issues with the white screen of death and some of those Pokemon games not working correctly let's see how it does on RetroArch No problems. I'm still getting full 60, um, so, you know, I'm not going to go through this whole setup here. But the game did not get stuck on the white screen of death. And it's actually pretty funny because the gpsv or i can't quite remember what the name of it was but the one that works so well on other devices was not the core that i used for this it didn't work that great so another good thing about this retro arch is you can use different cores you can try all the ones they have available and when you find the one that works you can set it to that one and run with it so that's a it's pretty easy to trial and error the cores on this retro arch here so let's back out of that okay so we went through the golden sun the pokemon let's go to harvest moon here it's for the game boy color now this is a full screen and i don't really like it um, something I noticed about the fire stick is that with my TV and the way I have it set up here, let me cut this volume down a little bit. Um, something I noticed is the fire stick has uh, over scan. Whenever I connect it in through the HDMI onto my TV, it cuts off some of the edges. Some programs allow you to close that in. Uh, Cody will let you bring it in. Uh, when I have my PC hooked up to this TV through HDMI, it does the same thing, but I can use the uh, video card options to bring that in to where it fits. Here you can see it, it, it just cuts off a bunch of screen. I don't like that. So what I can do here is I can actually go back to settings in this game. You can see the game in the background. You can see that it's still up. And I can go to video here. Let me find it. Did I pass it already? Um, can't see the forest for the trees. So video, I can go here and I have, more than likely, I have it set for what the um, emulator natively runs. So let's change the aspect ratio here till we find something that actually works. Well, I'm going to get it back to the beginning. So, core provided. Um, I kind of like core provided. Um, it's not stretched all the way out to the 16.9, which is all the way to the screen. Uh, 4.3 isn't that bad. Uh, core provided, custom, and 4.3. Uh, let's just leave it on core provided. So, core provided, you know, it's self-explanatory. So let's see how it looks on that. All right. Now, something else I want to show you is loading the is loading the um save states instead of having to go through this whole harvest moon and going through selecting your characters are you a boy are you a girl all that stuff i've been through all that already so let's load a state now this is actually where i've saved it right into the gameplay um as you can see i i really do enjoy it when it's brought in it this looks better with this particular game so you can see that that works just fine. I'm getting my 60 frames per second and everything is good to go. So let's close the content here.
Mega Man Extreme. Now, I love the Mega Man series. This was one that I remember it was I personally enjoyed. Some people didn't like it, some people did. This is one I personally enjoyed on this system, so I'm using that as an example of running the Retro Arch and running the Game Boy Color. So, with that, I'm not gonna have to go into a whole bunch of the gameplay itself, but let's see how it works here. Now, I know, guys, I could be going into uh, heavy parts of these games um, if I really took more time and went to spots that are known to slow down in these video games we could get a better test but I think you guys are getting a good idea of how well this is actually running on the fire stick oh and it died all right so let's close that we are, let's see how far away we are down. One, two, three. Let's do, I'm gonna actually speed up through some of these because I know it's turning into a really long video, guys, but it's been a while since I put one out. So, um, now this is a good example of, if you wanna look up here, this is a good example of whenever I don't have a core selected. So, the game that I went to was Castlevania II uh, for the Game Boy, the original Game Boy. And when you go to run, it's going to ask me to select a core. Uh, something that you're going to have to do when you first get this, and I'll go through some tutorials later on, is you're going to have all these different cores. If you download all of them, which I'm, I have done, and I've went through each one to see which one works best. And I'm just going to go with this one. I found that you will learn which ones like this MGBA for some reason just seems to work better on this one. Once you select it, then when you hit run, it'll save that into it and it'll use that core for this game. It's already kind of closed into this core selected screen here. Um, and we are gonna get into some Castlevania. I'm not hearing any sound glitches. Uh, the controller is responsive. One thing I did learn about this controller, guys, that uh, I didn't notice in my unboxing was there's no real good click. A lot of these games don't use these triggers, but if you got into, if you use this controller for other things that use the trigger buttons, there's it, it, it's not as set up the way that, that I would like it. It doesn't have like a, a click when it's at its bottom there that's really nitpicky it's just something I wanted to point out now no problems Game Boy's running fine no slowdowns let's go ahead and move on because I know like I said I know it's getting long so just... I would like to see Castlevania Symphony of the Night because that's very <laughs> nostalgic for me there. We're I want to see that <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my game <laughs> I was saving that for last. Of so course. The best for last. <laughs> so let's go ahead. And let's let's <laughs> speed up a little bit here. Um, so I'm not even going to have to show you that Spider-Man works. You can see that Castlevania works. We already talked about the fact that Nintendo 64 was a complete failure. Um, Nintendo, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, Super Mario Brothers 3. Uh, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out was actually kind of weird because... Um, let's just reset the cores here. I went through each one of the cores and um, Nestopia here seemed to be the one that I enjoyed using the best. It seemed like it was the best, but all of them kind of had like this weird glitch and I don't know if it's my, my ROM is messed up, but every single one of them has this weird something going on here. Some of them don't have this or this, but has something weird going on with that but and I just can't track it down I don't know why um, but the game itself there's no glitches in none of this and I played through several of these because this is one of those games once you get started you can't stop um, it's like a bag of potato chips you start beating these people and it's so comical and, and nostalgic and enjoyable you just can't 
quit playing the game. And I didn't have any other glitches other than that um, start screen. Now something, this is one of those games I uh, wanted to use to highlight the fact that you have to have uh, immediate response from your controller. <laughs> so, um, you have to, you, this is one of those games that will punish you if your controller does not have good feedback. If you're hitting a button and nothing's happening, split seconds count. So, I didn't have any problems. The controller did what it's supposed to do. I hit a button, it responds. No lag is the word I'm looking for. So, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and move on. Close the content, back out. Uh, Mario Brothers 3, you can see, I'm not even gonna go into that, it worked well. Um, Donkey Kong Country worked, that seems to be one of these games I use to test. Super Mario Brothers mm. RPG. Very uh, glitchy on a lot of different emulators I've used, and it seems like it's one of those ones that's hard to get right. Uh, Galaxy Note tablets, phones, higher end devices, lower end devices. I've had problems with it. So I wanted to see how it went with this. So let's go with the M. Oh, let me take a second. The Super Nintendo has the most cores out of anything that I tested and it took me the most amount of time out of all these devices. Hours. Oh yeah, yeah, cause she dealt with that. So, I mean, setting after setting, tweaking and messing around with it. So, like she said, hours. Um, and she's very patient and she dealt with it. So, she called me when dinner was ready and that kind of thing. So, um, the one that I went with here was 2005 plus. I went through every single one of these and for this device, the 2005 here, that's 2002, that's 2005 plus, 2005 and 2005 plus seemed to be the ones that ran the best. So um, all the other ones were failures. Even 9X, SNS 9X, which works great on the PAP and other devices, did not work well on this. No sound glitches, no frame rate loss. Um, it seems to be running exactly like it needs to. So it does cut a little bit of these edges off. It puts it into a smaller screen. Of course, when you emulate on something that's HD, you're gonna get pixelation, you're gonna get these uh, rough edges it's never going to look as good as it did or what you remember on your old school tv that's videos for another day whenever i hook up my original nintendo and my original super nintendo to an to an old school tv and you can really do like a comparison but it's not slowing down when we're going into any of these um cut scenes some of them some of the emulator cores i tried would freeze, hang up, and even kick you out of RetroArch altogether during this part. So, Super Mario RPG running with no sound glitches at 60 frames per second. Um, that's not bad at all, guys. So, let's go ahead and exit out of that. And Donkey Kong Country, same story. It worked fine, didn't slow down. I use that for a lot of different things. Uh, here's gonna be your game gear. We'll go with X-Men. Um, might not be like on the top 10 list. It might be, I, I haven't checked, but this was a game that I personally remember playing whenever I was a kid quite a bit. It's very nostalgic, so that's why I went with this one. And, of course, you can't play an X-Men game without selecting um, Wolverine there. So, no problems. Game works just fine. Let's get my claws out there. I've got the volume cut down so you can't, it doesn't talk over me or play over me. The sounds and stuff don't play over me. Um, 
but I didn't hear any sound glitches. This game ran just like I remember it uh, playing it on the Game Gear. So, in fact, I probably just need to dig up my old Game Gear, my old systems, and do like a blast from the past video or something and show a bunch of the old stuff that I've got stacked up. Um, not that I have a whole garage of that stuff or anything, right? Mm. <laughs> okay. We should do a video on what's what you do have. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's a good idea. So, <laughs> what do I have? <laughs> um, all right. Golden Axe, Bonanza Brothers, um, both of these. This is Master System. I do have Pico Drive and this Genesis Plus GX. Pico Drive is very familiar. I've used that on PSPs, PAPKs, or, you know, lots of different stuff. Um, so just to think out or try something outside of the box, let's try this other emulator. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm picking up a little bit of audio glitch there. Um, maybe just a little bit. But it looks fine. It's running fine. I'm not, I'm not getting any kind of slowdown or anything like that. What are they, bank robbers or something? Yeah, you got to get the loot. And um, this was one of those games for the Master before. System that really kind of pushed the system Ooh. and pushed the limits. Um, if they didn't see you, you can kind of hide in the shadows Scandals. or up against the wall and... Your, your whole point, oh, he saw me. So your whole point is to get past these guards and um, <laughs> get this loot that's up in here. What yeah. was this on again? It was on the master system. What is the master <laughs> system? I've never heard of this. What is this that you talk about called the master okay, system? Okay, so I didn't own one. Um, me either. I don't think I knew anybody that owned one. It's something I learned about whenever you become like a game a connoisseur or whatever from from our perspective I uh, think it was more popular in Europe South America mm. but anyways it it was uh, a Sega yeah. system it kind of along that same line as came out around like the Nintendo and uh, Sega Genesis before the Sega Genesis and it in a lot of people's opinion, and when you play the games, it actually had better graphics than the Nintendo. It just didn't have the same library, and I, I wasn't familiar with it, so it doesn't have the same nostalgia for me as Nintendo. So you won't see as much Master System, but there's people out there that love this thing. So let's continue on. And that was my tip of the day that I learned. <laughs> All right, we're getting to the end. We're getting to the end because I, Golden oh, Axe. I want to see. I like all the Golden Axe games, so I use that as another one. So uh, let's just go with Sonic the Hedgehog 2 here. I'm using the same core. I uh, only, only had to put two cores. Sega. <laughs> <laughs> I only had to put two cores for the Sega, which was Pico Drive and the one you saw there and they both seemed to perform just fine so it was the super nintendo that had like tons of cores and most of them didn't work so anyway here we go oh, oh you I have it on, two, it on players. two players i can't play oh no game. actually this is just the game oh gosh i remember this thing. game could kind of make you sick a little bit if you were like <laughs> all right um let's restart it here is that how it starts i don't remember but I guess so. Sega. Sega. <laughs> All right. One player. Here we go. Oh, you just have that little friend with you. Tails. You gotta remember what tail. You might remember tails. Mm. I was more it's of a, a Mario person, dude. Yeah, Mario. We were, we were more Mario and Nintendo. Nintendo geeks, people. But. Um, I actually remember seeing, uh, recent, well, one of the last times we were at your grandmother's house, there was a Sega hooked up to an old That's TV down my there. my cousins. Yeah. I remember the year the he got it. The yeah. original Sega, so. Um, we went on there. We I went. just haven't asked her if she would donate it it's to It's JoJo's. To, my cousins. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, um, Sega always emulates well. Everything they ever 
emulated on PC, handhelds, cheap Chinese devices, uh, fire sticks now. <laughs> The Sega's never really been an issue, so that doesn't even require a whole looks, lot of... It actually um, looks really good. Yeah. Never had a problem with Sega emulation, so we'll Yay. close the content down here. Is it time for... It is time. So if you haven't picked up on the pattern, I put at least two games on each one of these systems that were... Uh, some of them were very taxing on the system games that I'd, I'd typically use to test an emulator. Some of them just had some nostalgic meaning to me and I just wanted to use them as a test. But I did at least two games when you won the system. Um, it would take a lot more testing. So I'm sure you guys, if you start hours. using your Fire Stick, this took me hours and hours and hours uh, over multiple days just to kind of get an idea of what I wanted to do with this. So... I'm sure you guys are going to have games that you want to see uh, or you know don't work very well, that kind of thing. So let's try the final thing here. Uh. We used to spend hours and hours <laughs> playing this game. It's one of the games, uh, you beat this game all the way through. I'm I think I did. I'm pretty sure you did. Um, I love this game. It's like Goldeneye. Love <laughs> Goldeneye. You can't so, get anything for it on the for the Nintendo Six. Goldeneye was on Nintendo sixty four. Correct. Right. That's correct. Yeah. So love this game. Great music. Great graphics. Yeah. Great story. Now, One of my favorites. Um, I can't remember how many cores. Let's just sort of reset the cores here and see what. Um, ooh, mm -hmm. wrong one. Okay. Why did it do that? Um. Oh, that's because it's still on Sonic the Hedgehog for some reason. Reset cores. Back. If this doesn't play, I'm going to be uh -huh. angry. No, Which I, I have a feeling you tested it, though, oh, before I you started. <laughs> now, I don't, I'm not quite sure why it's showing Sega cores yeah, that's um, weird. here. I, I don't know why it's doing that. Um, but this is what we're wanting to go with. I've tried each one of these, and this Beetle works really well actually it says it's missing are you kidding me the one thing that i really <laughs> want to see is not coming Maybe it up it wasn't beetle that's my mistake let's close the content um reset core allocation run missing the bin you let's said see. the pico drive works good i see that and well no that's for oh. Se that's for sega here we go. Yay! It, was the, it was the last one. So, um, are you sure it's gonna come out? Oh, yeah. Oh, there we there go. We go. So now we've got it going. Nice. So, okay. So, my mistake points out a perfectly good reason why you would want to download many different cores and try each one. Now, PlayStation, you're going to have to have a lot more files than you would for like a Super Nintendo or Sega. That gets more into tutorial stuff, but you are going to have to have a BIOS and different things like that to run these games. But mm. let's see how, let's oh, see it how looks this game. Oh, so good. <laughs> it really does. And you know, there's actually filters and things like that I have read that you can um, make wow. this look even better. I haven't it looks tried so it yet, good, though. but we'll see how that goes. It looks really Maybe good. Not. Oh, why not put an L? It doesn't mm, matter. Just put LBL. Huh. You know what? <laughs> That's probably what you were starting you to are do. are a genius. <laughs> you heard it, people. <laughs> I'm a genius. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and go with LBL. Um... The cut scenes, oh my gosh, this well, looks so good. And, but the thing about it is, is you remember these being, um, there's a little bit of slowdown, a little bit of glitch. You're not really getting it showing here, but you were, you have a nostalgia of these things looking different. <laughs> and so whenever Still you get something good. on a HDTV, this is 720p, which is not nothing compared to 4K and <laughs> by today's standards but what would this look like on one of those real it, it wouldn't look yeah. that good yeah so you really do get on the smaller handheld screens you get a better picture but 
I mean, look I'm, how good this looks. I'm very happy with this, guys. I'm I'm happy. And I actually foresee some Mrs. Level by Level. Yeah, gear I might have to play this. Busting out some. Oh yeah. Castlevania, Symphony of Night, just to get that nostalgia. Absolutely. I'm not hearing any glitches in their voice acting. Uh, it is pretty hokey and corny, but that's part of it. You love it. It goes with it. Um, just hardly any slowdown at all. Um, very happy with the fact that I can play this game on my fire stick. Yes, they are. <laughs> All right. How about you? <laughs> yeah. So I'm not going to go. I'm going to start throwing the crosses. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I might go with holy water. I don't think holy water works on him that well. You're right. See, you remember. And the key was to get it right. Like, oh, I'm so out of practice with this game. The key was to get it to go right yeah. at the end where his, where his head was and, and had it. Look how Have big he is. Multiple times. So anyways, Cute. we can sit here and play this game. Um, For hours. Yeah. We're not going to do that. <laughs> so save the best for last. So final verdict. Um, super long video, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. Yeah. Over, <laughs> way over, way over. She's mouthing 40 minutes. Long time. So... Way, My arms are tired. Way over what I usually do. Um, had some comments. Hey, LBL, fast forward to the good stuff. So I didn't go through any kind of tutorial setup or anything like that. Um, thank you guys so much for bearing with me, bearing through this this long video. Wanted to show you the Fire Stick doing some emulation and doing the emulation well. Um, I had my doubts not really knowing anybody personally that done emulation on it, seeing a few other YouTubers covering the topic, some very well-known YouTubers covering the topic. Um, so let me know what you think. Hit me up in the comments below. And if you want some tutorials, I'm probably going to do some uh, light tutorials anyways, but I'd like to know your input, like to know what you think, and like to know specifically what you want to see. So thank you so much. It's been Level by Level Gaming, and I'm out.